And a good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Issues and Attitudes. My name is Jeff Owens, General Manager at WEIU-TV. My co-host is Mr. Corbin Cox. Welcome, Corbin. Hello. And today we're going to be talking all things athletics at Lakeland College. Bill Jackson is here. Welcome, Bill. Hello. How are we doing today? We're good. Uh, I'm going to have you skip a little closer to that, yep. Mike. We can move uh, up. I guess we'll uh, start out with just maybe general, you know, how things are going at Lakeland, and uh, we'll get into some details about what's happening over there. Constant movement right now. Um, it, it, we're in that crossover period where we have both basketballs going and, and baseball and softball starting up. Softball uh, started here this past weekend, and baseball opens up this weekend. So we're about three-quarters of the way through basketball season right now. When you think of Lakeland College, I mean, you, you, is it five sports plus you added uh, – is it fishing rifle or what? Are you, your... We just added a clan target as a clan tar- okay. as a club sport right now and a provisionary sport, trying to work our way through, um, seeing if it's viable. Um, when we looked at numbers within our district, there was over 200 participants at the high school level that participated in clan trap shooting uh, for I- IHSA. So it was something we looked at and thought we might have a market and a niche for it. So it how was, was the first year of it? Then? It was really good. Um, we had six on um, six on roster here this past year. Just added a seventh here this spring. Um, they shot U.S. Collegiate target shooting uh, this past year, and it was broke down into four conferences. They finished fourth and or uh, second in their conference. Um, had a really good year with it. So I, I went down twice watching them. They shoot in Effingham at, at that shooting club there, and got to learn a lot <laughs> when it came down to. It. I'd never been on a on a skeet shooting range before, so it was kind of kind of interesting. That's cool. I saw on the website you've got 12 games coming up this week. Is that correct? Uh, pretty close, I believe, yes. Um, we got uh, everybody out, and, and that's the, the tough thing. We have everybody on the road on Saturday. So we got both basketballs and baseball and softball on the road all weekend. So, so as the athletic director, how do you choose where to go, or do you send people, or do you – that's tough to do because you don't – I know you don't have a, a lot of people underneath you. Stole my question, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, like this weekend, it, it'll be actually be nice because I'll just stay at home. And I'll watch everything on live stream for the most part. There so it's it's like when I got out of coaching, I told uh, our current head baseball coach, and they were playing down to Wamba, and Hayden Birdsong was on the mound playing uh, that day, and he was, wasn't throwing very well for him. And I go, you know what? This is kind of the nice thing. I do not have to watch this anymore, so I can turn this off and not be all <laughs> mad uh, the rest of the day. So I turned it off and, and stopped watching it. So uh, this weekend will be nice. I can I can sit there and pull them all up in the live, on the live stream, pull them up on the TV. Um, some weekends I do travel. I try and get out with baseball and softball one time during February and go one big trip with them. Uh, just see how they're how they're traveling and and what some of the difficulties they're having for our student athletes and try and make our student-athlete experience even better. The one thing that you do have the advantage of over there is also you've a pretty experienced coaching staff, and, mm-hmm. and four of the sports have been there for a while. I know volleyball changed what, what, a year and a half ago or so? Uh, this summer. This we, summer. Had a, we had a change over this summer. Coach Wicker left and, and moved into administration. She's, she's at Missouri Western now and uh, brought in Lainey Jackson. Um, really hungry, gung-ho, out of Cumberland. She was an All-American, two-time All-American at Lincoln Land. Um, and excited for, for her direction, her, uh, her energy that she's bringing to the program. Nice. How long have you been at Lakeland? I'm in year 11, uh, year 10 as, a, as the athletic director. And so, so far, what's been like your favorite and least favorite part of being athletic director? <laughs> So my question is, oh, there I go. <laughs> uh, favorite part is watching our student athletes have success, um, being able to watch them move on from here and, and move on to the four-year level and, and get out and get jobs. We're to that point being in year 10 that I've uh, got kids out there now that are uh, married, starting their own families, watching them grow and, and watching them become um, adults is a, is a great thing. And uh, some of the toughest things just during these crossover times when it's constant running uh the communication between me and my wife um along with uh communicate with two kids girl or two kids going through sports as well it's constant movement during this time so uh, which is sometimes kind of fun uh, a few years ago the women's team won the national championship was that your uh, first time being a part of, of a national championship on any level like that that was uh, that was my first national championship it was that was an exciting year that was in the heart of covid and and to see what those young ladies went through just to get there um and the determination and grit that they had was was amazing they took us on a on a really wild ride that year and it was really fun 
as I didn't know if in, I didn't know that much about your past before Lakeland if you'd ever yeah. ran into it. So. It, it's always good to have that one championship, right? It is. It, as everybody used to say, my wife's the, the better coach. She coached college basketball for 10 years, and uh, she made 12 or 10 uh, national tournaments and I was one out away from a national tournament in my 19 years of coaching so <laughs> everybody uh, says she was the better coach so 10 out of 10 to 0 for 19 there yeah that. If yes. you want to know the numbers <laughs> yep. we won't bring that up <laughs> <laughs> um when you talk about your coaches I mean and, uh, go through them if you would a mm-hmm. little bit you know maybe, maybe t- tell the folks out there you know when you only have the five sports it's easy to talk about your coaches and and maybe their strengths and what they bring to the to the just the community, not just mm-hmm. as, not just athletics, but to the community. I get you. Right now, we have uh, two veteran coaches, um, as you mentioned, Coach Nelson, who runs our, our softball program. Um, he is in actually this will be his second to last year. He's he's set to retire after next season. So um, he's a Mattoon uh, native uh, from here. He's probably one of the hungriest people and, and hardest working people I know. He lives in Bloomington, uh, drives here every day. Um, he's normally the first one there and the last one to leave so he, he brings that work ethic and, and determination and, and you see it in his recruiting um, that's something that he really has brought to the table I I talked to him one night and we were in December and he ended up having to take his wife up to Chicago dropped her off to to fly down to Houston and he calls me that night and he goes I hear there's a pitcher down in Houston I'm gonna go see her I go okay. So you're driving to Houston tonight? He goes, yeah, I'm driving straight through. I'll I'll stay at my uh, my daughter's, watch this young lady throw, and then I'll be home. And he goes, I drove down there, knocked on the door. My wife answered the door and said, What are you doing here? He goes, Well, there's a pitcher down here I wanted to see, and <laughs> ended up turn watching this young lady throw, and then turned around and came home. But that that's how he recruits. He he's hungry and he has that still that determination to be great. Um, coach Johnson is our our women's basketball coach. Another one. Um, to watch his competitive fire still. Uh, he is, he's really competitive, and that's something that I, I really wa- enjoy watching is how competitive he is. And he's he's really instilled himself in the Mattoon community. Um, he's, he's very heavily involved in Mattoon Hitman. Um, and I believe, uh, what was it? Uh, which one? Which is your younger age group? Uh, I know he's been involved in all but Yeah, he's been in, in pretty much all. And yeah, I mean everything when it comes down. So he's really instilled himself in the Mattoon community and, and made himself a part of it. Um, got two kind of mid-level, uh, still learning, and, and Coach Larry and Coach Godinez is in our men's basketball and our, our head baseball coach. And those two have been really fun to watch their growth. Um, I, I get – to coach them a little bit and get them to learn from some of my mistakes and what I did over over my 19 years of coaching, uh, which has been really fun for me to to watch them grow over the last couple of years, um, which has been a pleasure there. And then Coach Jackson, our newest addition, um, same thing. It, she's going through some growing and learning, and, and to watch her from year one to year two is going to be really fun to, to see. She's a Cumberland native, and um, it, it's really going to be fun to see where she takes a, that program. You were talking about um, the coach's level of recruiting, and I noticed when I was looking at like the team rosters on the website how wide of a net it is with like players from Oregon and Hawaii. How does it like? Is it really gratifying for you to see so many people from so many different places coming to Lakeland? I, I think it just it, it brings diversity to our our campus and allows us to some of the things that I loved when I was coming up and, and going through college athletics as a as a student athlete was the opportunity to to learn to from different areas and people from different areas. I think it just helps us grow as people, um, bringing in different cultures and different different people from, um, you know, different areas of the country. And I think that's some of the great things. One of the, when I was coming through, um, especially at the community college level, my roommate was from Puerto Rico. Um, actually, was in his wedding, ended up uh, still talk with him. He's now the vice president of Aero Mexico. Um, wow. We talk about once a month still, which it would, if me not meeting him, I never would have the experiences that I would have been able to have. So um, we start locally. That That is always something we do from a recruiting standpoint. We start locally and we start to, re- we try and recruit the best student athletes within our district and within our area. And then we start to expand out into the state and then, and then the rest of the country. And then if we can't find our, our what we need, um, then we'll start looking internationally at that point. So. What about upgrades to facilities? Uh, where, where are we at out there? I know that softball was working on some stuff. Yep, we uh, actually uh, just built a brand new press box for softball. Um, 
I told Coach Nelson I was in the upstairs. It was bigger than some apartments I had uh, <laughs> growing up and nicer than some apartments I had growing up. So uh, really, really happy about that. It was something much needed. Um, we went through, uh, renovated two classrooms this past summer and built two brand new locker rooms, one for women's basketball, one for volleyball. Uh, then we went and renovated um, the men's basketball locker room as well and, and got that up to, to standard and, and really excited about those three additions. Um, started and then along with that press box, now we're we're starting to look at the next projects. Every year we're, we're trying to continue to get better and what new, what new project can we bring to the table? I think facilities are really important when it comes down to recruiting. Um, you gotta be able to have those things. With five sports and, and possibly with the clay and target, you know, becoming a six. I mean, is there is, is there thoughts of expansion? Have you ever thought about going back into other things, or is it you know too much for Lakeland? Or? You know, we're we're always looking at expansion. That's something we look at every year. Um, I I pull out every high school athletic director in the state in in our district, um, and I want to see numbers on sports that we currently do not offer. I want to see it from freshman through. Because Lakeland was a tennis team. power at yep, one point. We had yeah. tennis. We've had cross country. Um, it, those are things that we've explored again. It, it, and it comes down to numbers within our region as well. Uh, right now, tennis, there's only two teams within our region that compete in tennis anymore. It's kind of a dying sport when it comes down to, to this area. Um, a big one that's coming up and major metropolitans is, is men's volleyball um do we have a niche for that yet no probably not yet but in the horizon we could see something like that we've explored soccer that's something that is one of our our highest participated sports within within our district uh, which is Baff to me, I'm from a football area, so <laughs> when you're used to having 200 on a football roster at a, at a high school, it's. I, but I'm from a different age too. When it comes down to <laughs> the mid 90s, is different than than this. So, but yeah, we're always constantly looking and, and looking to to see what we can offer that might be a benefit for our our students within our district. Is there one sport you wish you could have? Like maybe you're like a big golf fan. You're like, oh, I really wish we had a golf team or something. Junior college football. You know, football is one that, that I wish we could have. You talk to my comptroller, she will tell you we will never have football because uh, she does not want to deal with the insurance aspect of it. So I, I completely understand it. But golf would be one that maybe could also be it when you think about it. Yeah, it's a... golf's one we've kind of explored as well. Golf, crunch country, and, and soccer is someone that we've kind of explored. That's interesting. Um, the conference, uh, where the conference line, is everything still the same out there? I've been out there the last year or so, so is everything still the same in the in the Great Rivers and all that? Yep, we're all of our outside of uh, women's basketball. Women's basketball competes in the in the MWAC, the Midwest Athletic Collegiate Conference. Um, we moved them there two years ago, um, so they full up play a full on MWAC schedule, and then baseball, volleyball, uh, softball, and men's basketball still compete in the, the GRAC, the Great Rivers Athletic Conference, which unfortunately I am the president of, so <laughs> don't uh, don't ask too much of it. So, <laughs> so what does that mean? Yeah, is it extra work for no money? Is that what that? Is? Pretty much, that's what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you just sign on for that for that title, I guess. So. Has COVID? Did, I know COVID affected all. Is 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 the, is the aspects of COVID starting to leave at the ranks that you're in right now? We're starting to get away. We we're really starting to get away from seeing those COVID players anymore. <laughs> yeah. um, we have one still within the region that is a COVID. Um, she's in her fourth year. Um, she played young lady for John Wood women's basketball but we're starting to see i think we're by next year we'll be out of that that covid year and, and that covid eligibility back and back to normal a little bit so. for that i mean i know it was good for the kids but it's it, tough for scholarships and money and all that it's been really tough for our student athletes moving on to the four-year level and being recruited that way it's created a log jam there um and also for the the incoming freshmen it, it's really it's helped us a little bit because it's opened up some opportunities for us maybe to go out and recruit some kids that we might not have had a shot at they might have been more heavily recruited division one wise um and we it, it's opened up some of those possibilities but it's really hurt us when it comes down to us helping our kids move on okay that's so. interesting so has there been like a specific school that you see uh kids from lakeland commonly getting recruited to after it's kind of a whole mix of everywhere. Um, we, we've got kids going to. We actually right now we got one in the in the ACC. We got a men's uh, baseball student athlete that's out at Pitt. Um, I mean, we have kids all over the country when it comes down to it, and that's kind of the, the fun thing. Uh, we we hope to give them the opportunities to move on, and that that is our ultimate goal is to help them move on. Um, and we want to. 
we've gotten them to that point. It's their now decision to, to figure out what fits best for them when they move on. So we've, we've had the luxury of being able to bring some or send some kids over to Eastern here um, here in the last few years, some some pretty good ones. And, and just off the top of my head, Hayden Birdsong and, and Jackson Nichols when it comes down to it. Two so, Mattoon kids. There you yeah, go. two Mattoon kids. Um, what about the portal? I mean, the portal has obviously hit the NCAA, hit it hard. It's got really changed some of the landscape of, of the bigger sports at, at, the, at the junior college level. Is it still there and prevalent? It's still very prevalent when it comes down to it. We're still – we're able to go into the portal and be able to pull some kids that that at the back end are still looking um in and have an opportunity at them and five years ago six years ago you wouldn't have that opportunity they would have been moved on and and had an opportunity at a higher level um and we're still now getting that opportunity just because of the log jam that we're seeing in in roster sizes do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing for college athlete athletics overall, not just Lakeland College? We're talking to Bill Jackson. Today. You know, that's some of the things that I'm I'm not sure. The jury is kind of still out on on how if this is going to hurt or hinder. It's similar to technology when it comes down to it. it I'm I'm from a day and age where we didn't have cell phones um, growing up. It was all landlines. Um, is the cell phone now going to hurt us as a society? We're always connected. Yeah, there's no turnoff at any point anymore. You got email, you got text message, you got everything on your phones anymore. And it's, is that a benefit to us or is it going to hurt us as a society? I think it's the same thing with the portal and in the NIL and everything like that in, in college athletics. It's really changing the landscape of it. In general, how is fan turnout at games? Is it good? Would you like to see more people? Or, You know, what we need to do, and this is something I was talking with Coach Jackson this morning, she, she deals with a lot of our community outreach. Um, we need to get involved in the community a lot more. We need to get our student athletes out there and involved in the community more. Um, we had a really good turnout on Saturday for our men's basketball game. We had Mattoon Academy out there, uh, Dance Academy, which has always been a fun night when they come out. Um, so we enjoy those types of nights. And we, But we need to, it, it, it's kind of a twofold thing. We need to get our student athletes involved in the community to get the, the community excited about what we're doing um, and, and that's something that we really need to focus on as an athletic department and as an institution as a whole is, is continuing to be more involved in the community to to show that we're here and a part of the community you touched on nil a little bit you now at, at, at your level does it, is it impact any students and any students have any quote unquote deals with local places or how's that work? We utilize a, a company called Open Doors for our NIL, which it, what it is is a vehicle and it's a platform for them. They create a profile. Um, there's opportunities out there um, that they can apply for uh, with different businesses, different companies, and then companies can recruit them off of off of their profile as well so what we can only oh all we really do is offer them an opportunity and offer them that that profile okay well I mean, what do people not know when they think about an athletic director's duties I and mean, most of you you, you you know you talk about scheduling and all that stuff but really what are some of the basic duties to, of an athletic director that people may not know about as much i mean what do you want to know i mean every everything is you basically can do anything and everything when it comes down to it as as i tell i've had some uh, grad assistants here from and some interns work from eastern illinois from the sports um, administration department and we were one day out i had one of them out we'd got nice and our maintenance department had gone home and we were out throwing salt and he kind of looks at me like don't we have people i go yeah but it, no i never looked at a duty as is it somebody else's job let's go get it done and let's make sure our, our fans that are coming in are safe coming in the into the field house tonight so um, we do. I do a lot of compliance, a lot of eligibility, making sure our student athletes are eligible, making sure they're compliant um, with our national and, and region rules. Um, that's a big thing for me. I'm also our assistant uh, men's region director, so I'm actually sit on D1 baseball's uh, poll. I sit on D1 men's soccer. Also sit on D1 men's golf, um, and then I'm on the sports governance committee as well at the national level. So uh, I try and get involved as much as I can at the national level, and just promote Lakeland at the national level as well. So, what about the um, you talk? Do you do the scheduling for that, or do you pass that to the coaches? I know the conferences probably have some say in that. Yep, from a region, they get the they'll get their conference schedule, their region schedule. Um, 
normally about six months in advance and then I allow each coach to go out and schedule what they want to go schedule when it comes down to it. They communicate with maybe if they want to host a classic or run a tournament. Um, we're, we're running a, a baseball tournament two weeks from now utilizing Mattoon High School in, in our place. Uh, Lucas Otto, a student athlete that we had a couple years ago that passed away. Uh, it's the Otto Memorial Tournament that, that we're putting on here in a couple weeks. We run a couple classics with women's basketball and a couple with men. Um, it's going to start next year. So they, they talk with me with classics or tournaments, but for the most part, I give them um, free reign to go out and, and schedule how, the way they feel they need to schedule. Interesting. So. Uh, there was something I saw on the website, the 2024 Dugout Club. Uh, what is that? That is a baseball um, booster club for the most part when it comes down to it. So they're they're looking for, um, like anything, we're, we're small college athletics, um, trying to fundraise and, and be able to support our programs. And, and that's something he's just started to uh, to try and help support his program a little bit more. Is fundraising part of your job? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. You know, it, your job, Bill? it is. It, it really is. That's something that that we. It's a necessary evil at our level when it comes down to it. We're not fully funded, um, and and to do some of the things we want to do, um, we have to go out and fundraise. It, I've always been a big advocate of the student athlete experience. What can we do to continue to make the experience great for our student athletes? Um, we, our institution in, in Lakeland, does a good job of of budgeting for us, but there's still certain things out there that I'd like to do for our student athletes, and that requires us to go out and fundraise. So. Um, it, that's something we're we're constantly always doing. And one of the things people always forget about, even at the Eastern level, is sometimes when a team does well, that's an added expense, and so you have to like at the last second try to come up with money mm -hmm. to house them and feed them and get them to yeah. national tournaments. So it's a good bad thing or a bad good thing, right? It could be, and, and <laughs> it, we ran into that a couple years ago, going taking softball out to Yuma, Arizona for the national tournament, and um, I had a, a conference scheduled, uh, our national meetings in Las Vegas that I had. Budget it in but I was going to Yuma sucked out that <laughs> that money so I didn't get to go to our national meetings that year so but I was I was more happy to, to send us to the national tournament That's cool. we're talking to Bill Jackson director of athletics at Lakeland College in Mattoon today about six or seven minutes left with Bill today uh, Corbin what else on your mind over there uh, what's something fans can of uh, Lakeland athletics can look forward to this season? I know softball's off to a great start, four and zero. Yep, uh, softball's moving in the right direction. They're four and zero. They'll go down this weekend. They play down at Dothan um, Chipola's tournament in Alabama, um, which would be a really good test for them. There'll be a, a bunch of top twenty teams um, in that tournament, and and women's basketball is a. Uh, running through a, a really tough region again. We have four teams ranked in the top 25, three of them ranked in the top 20, um, us being one of them. It's a gauntlet right now, and, and that's been kind of fun to watch. we got a bunch of some – a pretty young team with in, in freshman dominant women's basketball team and, and watching them grow over the course of this year is going to be really fun and <coughs> excited about uh, baseball moving forward. Um, they they lost in a in a regional final to Wabash, who ended up uh, second in the nation this past year. So they're uh, they're excited about their upcoming year and they open up here this weekend at at Mississippi Gulf Coast in Northwest Florida. So hey, excited moving forward with them too. I know baseball is what you love. Do you miss? Do you still miss coaching when it comes this time of year or not? I, I do not. I, I really do not. I, I, and that's some of the things I had to look back and and I can honestly say probably my last three years coaching I was not really committed to coaching. I was more interested in being in the office and being an athletic director than than doing anything coaching wise. And and you could really tell I was hurting the program at that point. And that's when I had to kind of take a step back and and say am I really doing this for the right reasons or and is it time for me to move on and I had an athletic director when I was at Graceland University before I was here um, who was a dual person he was a, a head baseball coach and, and athletic director there and he was at Brescia um, doing both of them and when he moved to Graceland he was just full-time AD and, and I go why'd you get out he goes I just got to a point where I was more interested in being in the office and I was being on a field and I was letting my assistant do more and more. And I sat there and thought to myself, I'm like, that's never going to happen to me. <laughs> and then I, lo and behold, it did happen to me. So, and, and I had to take a step back and, and say, you know what, it, for the betterment of this program, we need to get somebody in here that has the hunger and passion and, and desire to be great again. And, and we brought in Coach Godinas to be able to do that.
He was a good man, too. Do um, you, you plan staying at, at Lakeland? I mean, is, have you found a home? Or you know, right. coaches and athletic directors seem to move a lot. I mean, I'm not putting you on the spot too much, but, I mean, do you like it where you want to stay here? No, I definitely have. It's been a very open community, and, and that's some of the things that, you know, my, my kids have really become ingrained in, in the Charleston community over the last few years. Um, my wife enjoys it here. She works over here at Eastern Illinois working within their athletic department, works academics for, for football. Um, so we've really enjoyed our time. I'm here and it's I to be honest with you in, in 24 years of, of being in higher education this is the longest place I've ever been so I've kind of established some roots and it's been it's been really nice to do so there you go three minutes left anything else on your end yeah. over there so if someone out there is listening and they're thinking about pursuing athletics at Lakeland what is one thing you'd like to tell them you know get a hold of our coaches at that point you know one of the things that I, I tell if you have interest in in being a part of our programs reach out to our coaches show that you have interest um, show that you have some interest in what they want to do and, and at that point they'll reach back out and kind of talk you through the process of what they might want to see whether it's getting out see you in person um, um, seeing video, seeing tape, um, seeing different things and, and checking references and backgrounds on you to, to see if you fit what they're looking for from a program standpoint. It would be easier now when you think about it, though. People can get – it used to be getting film on players used to be tough. And now it's like, <laughs> well, I can have it to you by three today, Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's, I got film on, on everybody right now. So I, I can Google search about anybody and find film on them anymore. Um, what do you like to do when you're not, you know, you know, we're not working and, and, and running sports at Lakeland? What's Bill Jackson like you to relax? You know, the funny thing is, and somebody was talking about this the other day about people retired and that they have to have hobbies. And I go, you know what? I really need to find some hobbies because all I do is, <laughs> is worry about athletics and, and my family, and that's really about it. So I got to start figuring out some hobbies. I used to golf almost every day until I had our first child, and then <laughs> – that went out the door. So I need to find some new hobbies. There you go. So. Minute and a half left with uh, Bill Jackson at Lakeland College. Before we get to rapid questions, Corbin, any on your list? No, I'm all good. All right, rapid questions. Rapid questions, all right? Your greatest strength is, as an athletic director? Listening skills. Your not-so-greatest strength? <laughs> uh, I would say sometimes stepping away. Do you ever fish the Lakeland College ponds? I have never. Okay. Your favorite all-time pro baseball player can be active or inactive. Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Um, yeah, you women. Uh, will you make that? There's a yeah, you women's game at Lakeland this year. Would you like to see that be an annual event? You know, that was fun. It was really fun to host a Division One game and and see that um, and see the production when it comes down to it. It was it was really an honor for us to be able to do that. Uh, best concert you ever attended? I've only attended two. And really? Yes, I. In one of them was Dave Matthews Band, so I would have to say Dave Matthews Band. The Super <laughs> Super Bowl winner will be. Uh, if I don't say it, it's got to be the Chiefs because my wife would uh, disown me if I didn't. And your former assistant coach might not. <laughs> yes, my anymore. yes, he might not either. Morning beverage of choice. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. I did not. Did you have a coach that inspired you growing up to be a coach? I did. Uh, Terry Yogi Cox. He actually passed away a couple years ago. He was my junior college coach. Last question. Your most coveted piece of sports memorabilia, Bill Jackson. Walter Payton signed football. Really? Yep. Wow, that's pretty cool. Bill, good seeing you again. It's great appreciate, seeing you. Appreciate all you do at Lakeland College. I know you guys are having a great year, and so keep up the good work over there. I appreciate the time. We are WEIU. Everybody have a great day.